All right, we've got another Hot Rod Deluxe here. A nice coating of dust on the top panel. Says not working, maybe bad tube. Maybe. Most of the time when there's an actual failure in these amps, it's the low voltage supplies burning things, or the filter caps are burning or leaking, or there are bad solder joints throughout, or some combination thereof. And whenever I report that, people say, uh, mine's never had any problems, congratulations, or you just hate Fender or you're inventing stuff. You know, I'm really not. Anyway, I just got this home from the uh, music store, just came out of the trunk of my car. I've removed the screws to the rear panel so you don't have to hear that noise, but other than that, let's look at it for the first time together and see what there is to see. Okay. Yeah, I see a problem. Move the camera and I'll show you. It's right over here. I'm going to zoom in for this. Hopefully you can see it. There's electrolytic beginning to leak out of this screen node cap. So this cap is not particularly very good. And that could be the cause of all sorts of problems. And I see heat discoloration around these 5 watt components. These Zener diodes and these cement resistors. Now. I've got a, shot, a, a, a strong light on here, so it's easy to see that browning. As I turn off this light, so we see it the way he, most people would see it, just looking at their amp, they take the rear cover off, they don't have the fantastic lighting, they don't see the discoloration in this area, they just see, hey, this green looks like this green. Uh, my amp doesn't have a problem. But with a adequate lighting, you can definitely see the browning of the board all around these components. So these are no big surprises. A little bit of browning around this 2 watt here as well. So, uh, so far, pretty typical stuff. Let me uh, power it on with a current limiter and uh, see if there are any other problems the ant might have other than uh, the possibly wonderful sounds a failing uh, screen grid supply, screen supply can cause. So let me get set up to do that. Okay, taken out of standby. There's that wonderful sound. That's that screen node right there. Don't touch things inside amplifiers like I just did. I was being careful. Oh yeah, that's a wonderful sound. So we have sound if we go in after the preamp stuff. He may have a bad tube as well. Let's find out. Still got sound. Still got sound. That's interesting. Usually that kind of awful sound would not uh, indicate there's a tr trouble with the uh, preamp supply. I'm wondering if one of the dropping resistors has gone south. Let me put these tubes to the side. Notice we have that awful sound with a phase inverter pulled. So that's going to be definitely that screen supply. One other problem I just noticed, one of these preamp tubes was in here with a very bent pin. So let me carefully straighten that pin without breaking the glass. I'd show you, but I have to have it close to my eyes to see. So this tube was never inserted correctly. So yeah, even aside from the issue of that cap, this amp would have had some problems. All right, with that tube pin straightened, I think we're gonna have signal now. That lovely sound is the sound of one of the tubes not working. The output tube's not working because the uh, screen supply is so bad. Let me check some voltages in that area. So far, everything should magically go away once these are changed out and these are changed out. But let's just confirm a few things here. Negative 47. When I measure the voltage on that grid, the buzz goes away, which is interesting. So, time to call the owner and let him know that at the very least, he needs new filter caps and new five volt components no charge to straighten the pin on that tube. And then we'll see if the power tubes were damaged by the problems with the screen supply. 
And uh, again, these caps that fail prematurely, these components that burn the board, this is bad design and bad cost cutting on Fender's part. Um, so the expense of this repair bill and the expense of every repair bill on Hot Rod DeVille's and Deluxe's and Blue's DeVille's and all that stuff, that all have the same preventable uh, failure modes. That's all on Fender. But people don't get mad at Fender. They get mad at techs like me for saying, I'm sorry, that'll be $300, please, to make your, your $900 amp work again. And then they'll go out and buy another one from Fender. It's a crazy world.